gather around. Oh, you think I meant you? No, I mean my new coordinators, Zigbee coordinators. And by the way, there's going to be a chance to win some of these goodies. Without SM Lite emailing me, I wouldn't even know they existed. And that would be a shame because they have a very interesting product and I have a video in here to talk about it. And it's not just coordinators, as the title suggests, as we're going to cover a range of products. When I heard about this Kiev-based company and I checked their website, I got intrigued because they have an interesting selection of products and they sent me a care package, which consists of four big coordinators, one small coordinator and a tiny LED driver. So that's what we're going co to cover today. In the past, in my videos, when I was starting up with Zigbee, I was super eager to recommend anyone to give a go to a tiny and inexpensive coordinator, which was CC2531. It was a no-brainer to get started with because it was less than $5, but it, the coordinator, looking back, wasn't the most easy to use with. You had to deal with small pins to get it flashed. And the setup was, well, more difficult than it should have been. Things got slightly better when the Sonoff released their own Zigbee dongle, and I've used that just to find out that the firmware wasn't just ready, and I promptly switched to Electrolama and then to ZigZag Coordinator. The long story short, my journey was a bit a longish one, and there were a lot of different things that I've learned throughout the experience. So when I received these, really professional looking SM light series, that was SMZB06 series, those are these, or 07 series, this is something smaller that looks closer to an electro llama, I kind of didn't exactly know what to expect. They look professional, they look like they mean business, so I did expect complications to happen. But after trying them out, I've actually completely changed my mind. These are the coordinators that you should start with because apart from being a really good grade and offering a lot of professional features, they are by far the easiest to get started. These four coordinators that I've got in hands, those are SM ZB06 series and they have different designators. So there is a one without PoE, there is one with different IC inside, but on the surface they all do exactly the same and the differences in them is honestly minimal. So I'll be referring to them as one unit. Like honestly, if you look up the uh, Zigbee, I see that it's responsible for handling this, you'll discover that they're all very, very similar. Apart from the light version that doesn't offer PoE support, you'll have to power it externally, they all look alike. They have a USB type C port to get it set up via USB. There is an Ethernet port that supports PoE on PoE supported models and a small button that you can use for other purposes. And that's pretty much it. All of them, they have mounting holes and they come with some basic screws, templates, and even 3M tape if you want to use them in no screw configuration on your wall. I didn't have a PoE switch, but I thought, you know what, I've got these and I really wanted to try them in the PoE mode, so I promptly got one from Amazon. It wasn't that expensive. I think I paid around 30 pounds for a five port switch and I gave it a go. While I was waiting for my switch to arrive, I was uh, playing with SLZB07, which is the smaller coordinator. This is something that's uh, very familiar in terms of form factor because you simply just plug it into your, for example, Raspberry Pi and set it up in something like zb 2 mqtt Now this a device in particular doesn't just come with Zigbee support, it also offers threads if you want to um, future-proof your home automation, that's something to keep in mind. You'll be able to switch back and forth between different configurations. It is a slightly more simple version of the bigger ones, and uh, I guess it's slightly more difficult to use. And I'm going to explain why when we actually talk about the bigger ones. And the last product I've got, it's called A1SLWF03, which stands for LED controller for your LED strips. Now this is a WLED based controller, so it has a ESP with WLED um, firmware on it, and it offers a 
well, standard features. You have a USB-C for power and data. Uh, you can power it with a barrel jack and route the power directly to your LED strip. And the LED strip supports up to four different outputs. So you'll have your regular voltage, your data, uh, ground, and additional pin that you can configure. It also supports infrared remotes. If you want to go a little bit more old fashioned and use one of those cheap remotes, you'll be able to do that. And in the beginning of this video, I've mentioned it's gonna be a giveaway of these things. So if you're interested, I would recommend you to check the description. Right now, you'll find a link to my article that contains a form to fill in and register your interest in the giveaway. All the details are gonna be there included. So do check it out once you finish watching it. Before we dive into a setup and instructions and what got me impressed, I also would like to make a note of how often these get updated. Since the time I re received them about two months ago, there were a couple of quite important updates, including one that would bring thread and matter support for the bigger units, and just the quality of life improvements and bug fixes to these. And this is quite refreshing because when I was using something like Son of Dongle Plus, the firmware updates would rely on obviously community working towards making it happen, which would take much longer. And in some instances, there would be a couple of months of wait time until some issues were addressed. So yeah, I'm very impressed in how quickly these are getting updates and uh, how many different features are coming to these. As I mentioned, on the outside, they are identical. And on the inside, well, for the most part, are very similar too. Now, they consist of two ICs. There is a ESP32 that handles the internet end and provides you with a web access. So if you either connected this via Wi-Fi or you just want to open the web page and configure them, that's going to be ESP end. Now, they do have a port, which is obviously connected inside and allows you to have an internet connectivity to, through the port. But on that side, on one side, you have ESP32. Now, what kind of Zigbee AC you have, depending on which model you opted out for. Now, 06 without any additional designations comes with, let me check that, CC2652P. The 06M uses EFR32. The 06P7 uses 2652P7. And the light version of that, that comes also without the Ethernet, uses exactly the same IC. To get started with a small one, all I had to do is just configure my Zigbee to MQTT configuration file, and that was pretty much it. But where things got much easier was the web tool that allowed me to simply plug that in and change the firmware on the fly. No playing with soldering irons, no trying to figure out which firmware to do, it's just a simple checklist menu of which firmware I want to use for this, and I was done. That set me to hope for similar operation for these, and when I got them connected, well, that was simply mind blown. But before I show you that, I'm gonna put this device to rest and I'll tell you all my experiences about it because, well, it's a ESP-based driver for LEDs, and when I logged in, I've seen that familiar WLED driver inside. SM Lite actually included 5 meter RGB strip that I could connect to it, so I promptly did that. And I've used 12 volt charger with a barrel jack to get everything set up and connected. And within a moment, I had it all operational, which was nice. And one thing that I forgot to mention that this unit is equipped with a microphone. And you could see that in my previous videos where my sofa would light up in a different colors uh, in response to my voice. Something that I utilize using, well, it's set to time. Let's, let's change it to my equalizer. Now I'm gonna be back. Better? Okay, this is much better now, right? And since the firmware is WLED based, it comes with all the bells and whistles like synchronization, groupings, etc., etc. So if you're looking for an LED controller for the standard RGB three data, three line strip, then you can get something like that. It's time to actually focus on the main meat of this video, which are SL ZB06. And I know I called them SM by a mistake, but that's, that's on me. I was pleasantly surprised because the documentation for these devices is simply stellar. It's very easy to read that, find all the answer and learn how to use them. But frankly speaking, once you log in and see how the interface looks like, 
you'll understand that these are super easy to configure, super easy to use, and super easy to use advanced features too. I would advise you to get them started with Ethernet connection because it's going to make things much easier. Now remember, if you're not using PoE version or if you're not using a PoE switch, you'll have to power them via USB Type-C. But once you get them powered and connected, just search for the new device. Now each device will create a web server, which starts with a product name followed by your domain. So in my case it was .local and I was able to access it. But you can also use the device IP to open the web interface. And in there, this is where all the magic happens because this coordinator lineup has pretty much everything in there that you need to get started. Apart from the stuff I was expected there to see, like for example updating your firmware, you can configure them from the web interface, so you can switch them into Wi-Fi mode or just the Ethernet mode or USB mode, or change the way the Zigbee coordinator operates. You can have it as a coordinator, you can have it as a router for the supported devices, you can have it as a thread or use as a Bluetooth proxy and so many more. And all of that with a simple toggle and the reboot on the device. That isn't all because you can configure the access points and everything on these devices directly from the web interface. And once you're done with that, you can go into advanced modes and start playing with settings like VPN, etc. At this point, I also discovered that I went out of the way and included the configuration required for something like Zigbee 2MQTT or Zigbee 2Home Assistant. So you don't have to remember what to do. You just copy and paste the stuff that you already have and add it to your configuration to get started. It's seriously this simple. So between an easy setup and an ability to configure your network setting, VPN, or bridge these over secure tunnel, which is also something that just dropped in in the latest patch a couple of days ago, there is plenty of different options that you can take advantage of. And all of that is just a couple of clicks away. Okay, but the ease of use isn't everything. We need to actually evaluate them, whether they work and whether you should consider them as your main coordinators or maybe routers or extenders. After all, they come with a nice 15 centimeters antenna, which should be powerful to give a really good kickstart to your mesh network. Now, the individual network range of the coordinator isn't a much of an issue in a Zigbee because it's a mesh network. And if you rely on just that, you are building your mesh incorrectly but it's a good head start to have and this covers entire flat without any problems i've tested that i after i spun up a new node with instance on my super 6 cluster and connected this via network over the uh, poe and internet i used that configuration tool to copy and paste some settings into my zigbee to mqtt configuration and i was ready then i grabbed two sensors i know i've used this zone of temperature and humidity sensors to verify that they're going to be working just fine and the first thing that struck me was how quickly devices paired and been added to Zigbee to MQTT. Usually the process takes a couple of seconds, up to about 30 seconds for the device to be discovered and added. Not with these things. That was almost instantaneous and I was very surprised at how quick that went. I put my sensors as far away as I could from my coordinator and to make my testing slightly more difficult I did not disable my Zigbee network which means this coordinator had to fight with my overpresent Wi-Fi. Um, the Zigbee network already present from my custom coordinator and two other Zigbee networks from Agara and Zemismart, which was plenty of interference to actually test whether these gonna be having any issues at all. And I left the devices quite far away and I kept on switching different interfaces. I've checked that via Wi-Fi, I've checked that via USB, and I've checked that via Ethernet. In all cases, having them run for 24 hours, I didn't discover anything. And since I had two sensors running at the same time and delivering information to my chart, I could verify whether I would see any suspected dropouts. At this point, I wasn't even surprised that I didn't have any issues because everything else was just stellar. When I posted my short about receiving this some time ago, a couple of people reached out uh, sharing their experiences with them and mostly just, uh, you know, praising them. But I had some feedback about uh, them not behaving correctly when set to a Wi-Fi mode. Now, since then, that's been addressed in a firmware and when I was testing them, I did not experience anything. Uh, so I hope that the firmware update puts that issue to rest and everyone that is already using this have a stellar performance too. 
In the last couple of weeks, a thread update arrived to these coordinators and you were able to switch them over to work with thread. And while I have some thread sensors, I don't use Home Assistant. And right now, thread support is kind of easily to add to Home Assistant rather than to anything else. So I held off for now. I haven't tested the thread interface, so you'll have to let me know how did that uh, turns out for you. But considering how well it supports everything else and how often you get updates, uh, you can't go wrong with these and you can actually future-proof your house and switch over to Thread in the future if you feel that Zigbee is just no longer cutting it for your home automation. You probably noticed that I didn't say anything about pricing. It's mostly because I didn't want to scare you off. These aren't expensive. The cheapest one you can get is around $29, which considering that Zigbee dongle co uh, costs around $20 isn't that expensive. Now you're gonna pay premium if you want to go for a PoE models, but that's to be expected because you're getting extra hardware. So you'll be paying around $45 instead. But considering that you only need one and it's gonna serve you, well, like forever, it's a nice device to have and it's a money well spent, especially that the money goes to the company that is based in Ukraine. So I support that. But if you do have a reservations and you want to spend a little bit less but still get a powerful device, go for the Zero 07 series because it's much cheaper and you'll be able to use it instead. So guys, as I said, check out the link in the description to my article for details about the giveaway and let me know what you think about it. As usual, I do not have a posting schedule, so if you want to know what's next, and I have lots of things coming up, then use the YouTube tubes provided. I'll be around kicking about on my social media that are listed down below, so say hi, follow me there, and let's keep the conversation going. Thanks so much for watching, big thanks to SM Light for delivering these, because they are brilliant, and I'm just going to grab these and connect them to my home automation. Take care, bye.